This week on Dance of Joy, we talk about canal humor, Meposian ride shares, and problems with possessed pianos. All that and more as we watch season four, episode four of our favorite 80s hit sitcom, Perfect Strangers. Hello and welcome to Dance of Joy, a Perfect Strangers rewatch podcast. My name is Imran. Joining me every week is the very same person that would join me on the carpet in front of our Zenith floor wooden TV every Friday to enjoy some TGIF and Perfect Strangers growing up. It's my sister, Sophia. What's up, Sophia? What's up? I'm so glad you're here tonight because speaking of that Zenith, I'm moving to a new apartment. I'm going to need your help moving that giant Zenith TV up to the fifth floor. I'm busy that day. You didn't tell me what day it is, but I'm busy. Whatever that day it is. I I saw someone post a funny thing about helping people move at our, at, at, uh, okay. at our age, let's say. They were like, look, if you are above 35, hire movers. No one wants to break their back for pizza and beers. And I was yeah, like, you know what? it's beyond that. That's a yeah, good point. For sure. For sure. <laughs> we're, we're like old with money now. We have jobs. Yes. Why? Good. If you don't have to do it. Just the get only reason we're it. making money is to pay people to do stuff for us. And it's appropriate for this week's episode <laughs> of Perfect Strangers. We're at season four, episode four, titled Piano Movers. Very straightforward. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I wonder what they're going to be doing. Piano Movers. No reference to, no reference in the title to any cultural thing, but the whole theme of this show is a huge reference. It is. And we'll get to that in a minute. Yep. But if you were to open the TV guide in 1988, November, ahead of this episode, you would have read the following description. Balky strikes a sour note with Larry when he tells Lydia they'll move her piano up 10 flights of stairs so she can sing for a date who's a big time record producer. Wow. There's a lot going on there. Yeah. Nope. Never not funny. Moving heavy uh, things. <laughs> Heavy, awkward things. Up 10 flights of stairs. Yes. Who's moving these things? Of course, it's Bronson Pinchot playing Balky Bartagabas, Mark Lynn Baker as Larry Appleton, and uh, a kind of a bigger role for Belita Moreno here as Miss Lydia Markham <laughs> causing the plot to happen and all the problems. Yes. And she actually, this was the episode that made me realize, and she's been around for a while in this show, but this was the episode that made me realize how funny she can be, like great comedic actress. Absolutely. I was just thinking, I was like, this was Mrs. Twinkasetti. It's amazing. You forget. This is yeah. a completely different person. <laughs> she was funny as Mrs. Twinkasetti, too. But uh, but like you think it's a whole separate actor Edwina. playing Mrs. Twinkasetti. Yes. yes. Yeah. Perfect Strangers, of course, now streaming on IMDb TV with completely an Amazon. Completely free. Just with an Amazon account, but free to watch. It's fantastic. One small commercial break. It's not long at all. It's a short commercial and it's mostly the show. Uh, as I said a moment ago, this episode aired in November. It was November 4th, 1988. All right, brother, let's get into it. Act one. We have a nice little opening gag. It's cute. They're yeah. in the basement of the Chronicle. Balky and Larry are standing at Larry's desk and they're like paying bills or something He's paying at bills. work. Yeah, you know, like it was work. the 80s, but even in the 80s, people did home from work you know yeah, probably shouldn't <laughs> be doing your this home at work, stuff done at work i paid my bills in the office all the time but with us it was the, just a click of the computer you know they work in the mail room so it's That's very true. convenient you just slap stamps, thing, yeah uh, send the bills in. so they're paying bills back in the 80s you had to do those by sending them in manually there was no well, online anything that was so, a pain <laughs> i remember writing checks yes. putting them in envelopes i wrote checks <laughs> i'm so glad you could just press little things on your phone and the bills get so paid easy now. so yeah. easy all right, so uh, they're paying bills or something, and they're like assembly lining it. And Larry's going through the envelopes. He's like electric bill, and Balky licks a stamp and and stamps it on the envelope, and then hits the envelope like yeah, and then hits the envelope. Make sure make the sure stamps it sticks. on there. Yeah. Now, of course, we don't even have that. Even the stamps are already sticky. Um, oh yeah. These were old school stamps. I forgot them. about that. that yeah. yeah. Now all the stamps have adhesives on it. You won't get poisoned. Right. You still got to lick the stupid envelopes, though. Why haven't they figured that out? 
Some yeah, of them that's true. No, some of them don't. Yeah. yeah. All right. So they do electric bill and he puts it, Belky licks a stamp, puts it on there, slaps it on. Smack. Gas bill. Belky again licks a stamp, puts it on there, Smack. slaps it on. Larry goes phone bill and Belky licks a stamp, puts it on there, slaps it on with his hand. And then Larry looks at it and there's no <laughs> stamp on it. And they both look confused. And then Larry reaches over and like, Cups Balky's ma- like chin, and then squeezes his cheeks so his tongue sticks out. Very comical gag. <laughs> and then when his tongue st- sticks out, the stamp is There's still on the Balky's stamp. <laughs> he would have swallowed it. Careful. Cute. Very cute. Balky. Very cute. So he grabs it, puts it on the envelope. That's a like unrelated to anything in the show. It's just like, you got it's a nice a opening, opening uh, gag. Yeah, opening tag, a little bit of laughs. Yeah. And then something happens that happens a lot on the show is Lydia runs in with the plot of the episode. Uh as she's always doing that. With wonderful news with, that, yes, about herself. Something has happened. And in this case, she says it's the greatest day of my life. She runs in from the staircase, comes down, and she says, Chuck Panama called and he's coming to my party tonight. After Balky asks what the news is. And Balky's like, get out of the city. Get out of the city. Like that. And he goes, the Chuck Panama, the one they named the canal after. (laughs) And then Larry responds with what I think was the funniest line of this whole episode. at, At this point, you think... I, you know, I figured he's going to correct him and yeah. uh, and you forget that what he but does. But he just plays along this time. Yes. He's like, no, Balky, you're thinking of Chuck Suez. Ah, and I, canal whoever humor. wrote this line, mm, chef kiss, I was laughing so hard at Chuck Suez for days. This is canal jokes. I mean, they, 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 they figured out <laughs> canal jokes, which is pretty smart. It's like brain. Panama Chuck Suez. I love it. It's good wordplay. <laughs> Uh, Lydia just like looks confused and continues on with her go- good news and explains to them that Chuck Panama is the one of the hottest record producers in America. And Ooh. she's been dreaming of being a singer her whole life. Oh, this is new information. We did not yeah, know. Yeah, we did not. Th- and she tells them that people have even told her that she's a young Barbara Streisand. Wow. And she has she is determined that if she can just get the chance to sing for Chuck Panama, she will get a Grammy soon. And Balky goes, oh, I would love to meet your Grammy. (laughs) Is she coming to the party? Again, another two word plays in the same little scene. Literally love it. Uh, But no, Lydia says, no, she hates parties. And here's where uh, the plot starts. She goes, could you do me an incy teensy favor? She says. She has a piano. She can't get delivered to her apartment tonight. And she goes, since I thought you guys were coming anyway, could you pick it up <laughs> on your way to okay, the party? Well, like, First of all, what kind of a request what kind, is This is that? not, Lydia, this who, is not a teensy winky favor. Who just asked their, like, work colleagues, their acquaintances, <laughs> be like, by the way, can you pick up a piano, a piano and bring it over a whole entire piano? That's ridiculous. And lovable, innocent Balky. I love his line. He goes, perfect. We were going to ask you if we could bring anything. Oh, my God. <laughs> and Larry Larry's... in the back, his eyes wide open, is like, oh, what, what, what's going on? He goes, I would love to do this, but I have a back problem. And then Lydia lays on the guilt, of course. She says, if she doesn't sing for Chuck, her life is going to be meaningless. Uh, and, and Larry's like, I know what you mean. The only thing worse than a meaningless life is a bad back. Reminding her again that he has a bad back. And then Lydia's just, she looks like she's about to lose it. So, uh, so Belky's like, no, no, I promise you'll get your piano. And he turns to Larry and says, cousin, don't worry. I'll do all the work. And then he turns to Lydia and goes, I always do all the work. Well, he kind of does. We've seen it. Yeah. So Lydia is happy again. She's like, perfect. She hands them a piece of paper with the receipt for the piano that they're picking up. And she's like, terrific. And she asks them to be there a little bit early so she can do a sound check. Thanks. And hurries off. And runs off. So not only pick up the piano. Can you pick up a piano and get there early? Thanks. Okay, thanks. Bye. And runs away. And now here, Larry has some really good points. He just goes, why did you do that? He goes, I want to go to a party and have fun. I don't want to work up a sweat moving a piano. I'm with Larry on this one so far. This is uh, this is asking a lot. 
And then Belky's like, I got this covered. But actually what he says, this is where Belky has his thinking cap pulled way down over his ears. That's a good Belky. It's just a good Belky is a man imagery. Uh, and he says, we're not going to bust our buttocks. I love that he always says buttocks. <laughs> buttocks. And he says, they're going to rent one of those trucks with a little elevator on the oh, back. Okay. And okay. it won't. Larry's back will be just fine and his underarms will stay nice and dry. And then he says, and because you have helped a friend, you'll feel good inside. What you say? <laughs> Larry begrudgingly says, I'll help it, but I won't feel good inside. And they <laughs> they sk- skitter off arguing into the garage. And the next time we see them, it transitions to later that night. You see a big, uh, huge apartment building, right? With like a, yeah. a central entrance. Uh, and then we're inside, and so far, no problem. They've got this piano. Yeah, I, there's like a huge gap. Right. I'm like, they how the did they, where did they pick up? So they rented a truck, presumably, but like. Because, well, the next time we see them, the door opens. Balky's pushing this piano yeah. in the door, and they just skip the whole part. Okay, so they got the <sighs> truck, fine. They got the piano on there, rolled it out. The elevator worked, no problem. So far, it's been a piece of cake, I guess. I guess there's no like little steps leading up to the main floor of this apartment, whatever. It was just no. It's yeah. just you roll right in. Easy peasy no, until easy they peasy. got to the first floor of the. I love what Larry's doing here. We've seen him do this before, where Balky does all the work, and Larry's just yeah. like, "Yep, look, bring it in here. Okay, bring it out. Yeah. Spin it around. A little more. Oh, little the more. refrigerator in season yes, one. Uh, yeah, he's like, up, 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 right there. And yeah, then he that presses. was exactly like the refrigerator in <laughs> yes. season one with Gina. Swing it in, swing it out in, <laughs> swing it around, swing back it up. Like, and then he uh, presses the elevator button like he just did all the work. Hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> and Balky says, see, you thought this was going to be hard, but it's going to be just as easy as pushing goats up a hill. <laughs> That's a great line. Is that easy? Uh, yeah, that doesn't sound <laughs> too easy, Balky. This is a, a foreshadowing of what's to come. So then Balky walks to the back of the piano. He swings it around long ways and pushes it in the elevator and it hits the wall. And most of the piano half is, of it still, is sticking uh, out yeah, a third of the half. elevator. And the door, they even close the doors a couple times to it doesn't emphasize that it long doesn't long fit. ways. And Larry goes, looks like one of the goats doesn't fit. <laughs> 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 and then and Bucky's like, okay, smarty pants. He pulls it out and then he turns it long ways. He goes, well, I'll just do this, turn it on like this. And voila. And of course he shoves it right against the wall. Doesn't even get inside the it elevator. It doesn't get inside because, because the length of wide. the piano is is longer <laughs> than the length of the open elevator. Why doors. he thought that would work, I don't know, because you could visually tell this is wider than the elevator door, but funny nonetheless. Um, so they let the elevator doors close and they are still with this piano in the lobby of this building. And Balky says, Question <laughs> How are we going to get this up to Miss Lydia's apartment? And Larry's like, easy, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> Balky's sitting on the piano at yeah. this point, and Larry just starts pushing it uh, out the door. He's like, well, we gave it our best shot. Sorry. He goes, guess the world will just have to do with one Barbara one Streisand. Bar- oh, that's so mean. <laughs> but Balky, dear, sweet, innocent Balky, has pro- made a promise to a friend uh, to help yeah. and must fulfill it. So he's, he's like, there must be a way. And then he sort of just like glances up and then we pan back and we see this tall, tall staircase Lots going of stairs. upward. Lots yes. of stairs. Two, two and landings. to me, it's a set, right? But to me, yeah. they, I think they made the stairs like look too steep. Like yeah. <laughs> they're really steep. And it's got to <laughs> be narrow, staircases I guess. Staircases yeah. are, but uh, anyway. <laughs> And Larry, Belky just kind of looks up. Larry sees what he's looking at. And he's like, "Uh -uh." (laughs) uh-uh, which is a very funny way to say. He said it really funny. "Uh Uh-uh. And he says, uh, Belky's like, yes, yes, we can do this. And and Larry's like, no, no, think about what you're thinking. (laughs) And then (laughs) Belky just like makes a weird like thinking face. Scrunches up his face. But then Larry has a very good point. He goes, two men are going to carry a piano upstairs. Uh-uh. uh-uh. No way. No way. And no. And again, and no. this is this is ridiculous. What is Balky thinking? Yeah. You were, this two men cannot carry a piano up all these stairs. It's just making me tired thinking about it. Well, what Balky is thinking is that they made a promise, but then Larry quickly points out that they didn't make no, a promise. They didn't. Balky <laughs> made a promise. Larry didn't promise anything. And then Balky's like, okay, you're right. I promised. 
So go on up to the party and I'll just take care of it. And then he says this <laughs> random. And so he pulls the piano to like the, the base of the first flight of stairs. And then he says, cousin, don't worry about me because I'm in a good place about it. Which <laughs> yeah. just was funny. And then he, he stands on the first step and reaches like the piano is in front of him long wise. And he re reaches down to get a hold of it. And then he just like tries to lift it, but it doesn't yeah. move. And he just like he makes goes, this, uh, he just groans. Yeah. And then he goes, one. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, we uh, hear uh, the uh, piano uh, thump down on the first set, like the notes inside. Um, and he just goes, one. <laughs> <laughs> and then Larry, of course, seeing him struggle, has to get involved because he's Larry. And, and Larry has a better way to do everything. And he has to Larry explain it. And he walks over. He's like, who moves a piano like that? <laughs> who and Belle, moves he's a like, piano like that? Someone who's alone. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, Larry's going to help, but he's got to do it his way. And he tells Balky, what we need first is a plan. And Balky goes, cause it. Nobody enjoys one of your plans more than I do. But I was just thinking maybe we could just pick it up and go. And then I love this bit. They just go, oh, you just want to pick it up and go. Just, just pick it up and just go. Pick it up and go. Oh, that's what you want to do, Balky. Just pick it up and go. Yes, pick it up and go. Pick it up and go. And then we, get a, and go. we get a great Larry Balky, 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 Balky. 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 <laughs> this is great. Let's do a little reenactment here. He goes, I'll be Larry. He goes, do you know the most common way people hurt themselves? Running with sharp sticks in their hands? No. Trying to cut their toenails with a bolt cutter? No. Sleeping out in the open and letting little bugs crawl in their ears and make nests, and then they start to buzz and buzz until you think you're going to go crazy, but you just take a little Q-tip and you get in <laughs> no, there. No, balky, balky, balky. <laughs> That's so funny. That last one is funny. A yeah. bolt cutter. Toenails and a bolt cutter. That's funny. No, he says the most common way people hurt themselves, of course, is by lifting heavy objects incorrectly. And he says the secret to lifting a piano is to let your legs do all the work. And here's a great little physical, great comedy, physical comedy warm up. It's just a warm up for their main exercise. He goes, it's all in the legs. And they're both standing. They're standing they're next doing to each like other. They're doing like plie squats. Yeah, Larry does a like little a, like a sumo plie. squat. Yeah. It's a plie. Yeah. With their knees out, their feet pointing out. It bends the, out. It goes like, down. It demonstrates all, the all in the legs. And then, <laughs> and then he, when he straightens up, Balky does the same movement. And then they go back and all forth, the alternating all squats, the little plie squats, <laughs> saying all in the legs, all, all the legs, legs, all in the legs. And <laughs> Balky's like, I like this. And Larry goes, I thought you would. I thought you would. <laughs> <laughs> so then he, they're, they're, they're doing that and they walk over to the piano, except Balky is still in like a squat position. Yeah, yeah, he's squat. followed him with his legs all squatted. And he's like, Go on the other side. He makes Balky go on the other side. Uh, and then here is the, here's the plan. Here is the what the Larry way to move a piano. On the count of three, they will lift the piano up one step and set it down. What they want to do is establish a rhythm. Larry and then says. Balky's like, hey, I got rhythm. <laughs> I got music. I got my pal. Who could ask for anything <laughs> more? And he says it so joyfully. And then he laughs, throws his head back and laughs. And then he... Very makes this very cute face where he like puts his arms on the piano and just smiles at Larry. Like, eh? so funny, cute. Right? Uh, that is a uh, reference to the classic song I Got Rhythm by George and Ira Gershwin from 1930. This is a really old song that he's quoting, but everybody Belky knows. knows all the classics. Yeah. How did where did he hear this? I guess they have a record Meepos. store. They got a record store at Meepos. So into jazz. Ask for anything yeah. more. Everybody like knows that. that. Yeah. So all they're they're getting ready. They're like, ready? And Buggy says, yes. He goes, all in the legs. All, the legs. all in the legs. And they lift down. They go, one, two, three, lift. Lift. And lift it up to lift. one step. And uh, then it moved. Then they and go then again. they both, both of their heads pop up on either side of the piano and look at each yeah. other with a they're smile. Like, oh. And then they go back down. One, two, three, lift. <laughs> and then they do it again. And again, presumably they keep continuing. And we... Um, transition to the next scene we're still on the stair well is it well, there's a little it's, it's a little like time a dissolve time yeah, passes okay, and dissolve. they're halfway they're halfway up the stairs you know in between landings yes. and uh, they're still doing one two three lift and larry goes what floor is lydia on and he goes one two three lift lift and they pick it up and then Belky goes she's on 10 and then he goes, one, two, three, ten. Ten. <laughs> and then as he says that, the piano slip slides all the way down, almost oh. crushes Larry against the wall. Yeah, so and they went back. They're back a little bit at square one. 
and uh, and Balky's still sort of up at the top of the stairs. Larry has fallen down with the piano. He's like shouldering it at the bottom of that first flight. And Balky's like, somebody broke the rhythm. (laughs) Oh, yes, somebody did. And that brings us to the end of the first act. Uh, Listener, if you want to join the conversation and geek out about weird things and perfect strangers, join our Facebook group. There's a link in the show notes. I post a thread for the episodes we're doing a couple weeks ahead of time so you can leave your thoughts there and we will include them in the show and you're going to hear some at the end of this show. Yep. And there are some really great thoughts, stuff we we sometimes don't think about. So it's really uh, it's really helpful and it's a really great conversation in there. Okay, that takes us to act two. How are these guys going to get this piano to the this tenth is, floor? This is a big task. <laughs> so act two starts. We're still on the stairs. We're still going one, two, three, lift. <laughs> and they get to the a landing between flights, and we see behind them there's a door that says it's the third floor. Oh, they made it to the third floor, which is great, because Balky all- goes, good news, Carson, we only have seven floors to go. And they show you the shot of the log staircase again, and then <laughs> it dissolves again. Wait, 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 you missed a really funny line from Larry. Larry, when they're at the third floor, he you get he is like done. He has had it. He's like, I can't believe we're moving this up to we're only on three. And he says to Balky, why do I let you talk me into helping other people? Why do I listen? I could have said no. And then he pauses and he goes, I did say no. Yeah, but he's helping him. He did say no, but yeah. he can't not help. He can't not help, but he did say no. He never wanted to do this. Okay. So, yeah, then um, they look upward. There's, like, more stairs and more stairs and more stairs. And then we dissolve again. Time passes, and they're in the middle of the stair, another floor. It's really just the same set, and they're just changing, like, the floor numbers, which is really funny. Um, I think so. But but we're we're presumably past the third floor as it dissolves. And they're going, one, two, three, lift. And then this one time, (laughs) Balky puts it down. And he's got this look on his face like Uh-oh. he is in pain. He is like, I know, but Larry doesn't see this. He goes, one, two, three, lift. and lifts it up and it doesn't move. And Balky's like, cause it. And Larry goes again, one, two, three, lift. And picks it up and doesn't move. And Balky's like, cause it. And Larry's like, Balky, why aren't we moving? And Balky goes, we're not moving because, because the, piano the piano is on, on, my, on foot. my foot. I love this reaction. Larry looks up, looks up at it, and he goes, ooh, he turns his head away like he can't look at it like yeah. it's so bad. He's like, oh, oh. And Larry's ooh. Larry's bright suggestion to this was, well, lift it off your foot. He's like, take it off <laughs> And Balky's now getting up. annoyed at him. He's like, that was my first instinct. <laughs> but the wheel is caught on the carpet. Oh, and boy. then Larry's like, okay. You hang on to the piano <laughs> from the top. Now, yes. Balky's at the top of yes. a very and steep Larry stairwell, at yes. and Larry's so at the bottom, Le- and Balky's the piano's at pushing. an angle on these stairs. Yeah, Balky's pulling, Larry's pushing. So he goes, you hang on to the piano from the top, and he's like, I'll come up to your end and lift it off your foot. And then we hear the audience. So you hear the audience like, go. already know this oh, is not no, a good no, no, idea. No. They gasp. It's the funniest reaction. They're just like, oh. Heck and no. apparently this is a very narrow stairway, too, because there's not much room to pass on either side of the piano. No, because Larry has to throw his leg over the railing yeah. and saddle, climb, and pull himself up. Past the piano, as, and as he's getting off the railing, he puts his hand on the piano. Balky screams. He goes, oh, sorry. Ah. Uh, <laughs> and then he gets next to him. He goes, okay. On the count of three, they're both uh, uh, holding the piano from above. He goes, on the count of three, lift the piano and don't let go. Ready? He goes, one, two, three. They lift the piano. Of course, Balky lets go immediately. <laughs> and the piano goes thumping down the stairs, crashing through the window in the hallway and the teetering, yeah. uh, teetering halfway out the, third floor. the window or fourth floor. It's up in the air. Yeah. It's just dangling it's half out this window. The window smashed and fell. They could have killed somebody oh, with they, that glass. Well, they, later on, they could kill somebody yeah. too with what happens, which uh, everyone's lucky. And Larry looks about, they just like both watch this happen. And now the piano is half out this broken, smashed window at the bottom of a full flight of stairs that they had already pushed it up. And Larry looks back. He says, I, I said, lift and don't let go. <laughs> and I was like, oh, don't. 
let go. Don't no. let go. You know, so then don't would have been the operative word. <laughs> and Larry's like, yes. <laughs> and then the piano starts to tip and they're like, ah, they run down and you grab it. And, and I love this. Pull it I, back I, in. I love this line. Where Larry's like, Bucky, pull, pull. And Bucky goes, what does it look like I'm doing milking a goat? <laughs> <laughs> Any goat well, reference they, is always great. They, well, they managed to get the piano. They pull it back in. They didn't lose it out the window. And Larry goes, okay, Here's the plan. Larry is pissed. Oh, yeah. He's not having it. He goes, here's the plan. We move the piano up to Lydia's, and then you move back to Mipos. Oh, oh my God. Just... So mean. <laughs> He's just booting him out of the country. He's Oof. like, after this, I'm done with you. But, of course, Balky knows he's joking. And he goes, I'm glad you're in a joking mood, you big kid, are you? And then he goes, now let's tackle these ivories, which is a Very great play funny, on words. which is, which the the phrase is tickle these yes, ivories. to play, the ivories meaning to, to play, play the, piano. the piano. He's like, let's tackle these tackle ivories. Tackle these ivories, which works, which is an apt expression in this situation. So now we go to the next scene and we're on a different landing. They have, they have gone up a little bit and they are sort of making the turn on the landing to start going up the next flight. And they're still going, yeah. they're really tired. You they're like the one, sweaty. Two, three, lift is they're like one, a lot two, three, slower. lift. Less. One, two, like, three, uh, lift. And then they go, one, two, three, lift. Uh. Uh, and then Larry looks up and re- realizes that they're on the 10th floor. The, si- the sign on the door in front of him says 10th floor. And oh my says, God. We're here. Oh my God. We made it. And Balky jumps over and hugs him. And they're yeah, just they hug. like. They're so exa- excited. They made it to so the 10th floor. They're so excited and delirious. And he goes. Which is like an it. accomplishment. They, oh, my God. Yeah. I can't believe they moved this up there. They're, going, they're like 10 and a half, right? The piano's yeah. going up the next flight of stairs. And Balky goes, and you thought it was going to be hard. <laughs> yeah. And then Larry goes, I can't believe we brought a piano up 10 flights of stairs. And I didn't hurt my back. His back is fine. Somehow, and they laugh and they hug again. They're so delirious. And he goes, okay, Balky, open the door. And so Balky walks around, of course, tries the door. Door is locked. Door is locked. <laughs> and then Larry just kind Has of a breaks breakdown. down. Yes. Yeah, he becomes he starts pathetic weeping. Larry that we all love. We've seen before. You know, everybody is susceptible to a breakdown <laughs> like this when you get up, put pu- Push a piano up ten flights of stairs, and the, and the door, door is up. locked. Yes, he's, and he's like, like he gets why he's like the door locked. can't be locked, <laughs> and he starts whining and sobbing. And Balky tries to cheer him up. Uh, no, Balky says so. Larry's just like sobbing into his hands and going like, no, no, no. And then Balky just looks at him and he goes, cousin, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> don't, don't do cry. That. You're a grown man. Come on. He goes, it's going to be okay. You know why? We're just going to go downstairs and we just take the elevator up and I bet you can open it from the other side. Sure. Great idea. Okay. 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 (laughs) Okay. So they start making their way down the stairs. The piano is now sitting on the 10th floor landing. The landings are pretty short. But it's sitting on the tenth floor landing, well, it, but it's sitting upright on like two stairs going up to the the next floor. Right, you know? it's not completely flat. Right. Yeah. Uh, and so they start to, the to, Larry and Balky start going down the stairs, and Larry's still whining. He's like, "I'm missing the whole party, and I'm all sweaty, <laughs> and I got a blister." Got a He's blister very childlike. And then Balky just looks at him and he goes, "And your pants are ripped." <laughs> and he goes, "My pants are ripped." I love these pants. These are my good pants. These pants make me look taller. Well, now, but like Marklin Baker's demeanor is great because he goes from pathetic Larry and then that snaps him out of it. He's suddenly, my pants are ripped and he's yeah. like really mad. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it, this does make him lose his mind like Balky was afraid yes. of. Yes. And he goes back up. He goes, I hate that stupid piano. He walks I back up there. It. And he goes, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. And he kicks the piano. And then he goes, ow, because that's going to hurt. And then he turns around, hops on his left foot, and slips and hurts his back. Suddenly his back goes out. He goes, oh, 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 my back. Oh, boy. I hurt my back. First of all, he's supposed to be like 25 or 26 years old. he's got a really bad back. I mean... I guess I had a bad back at that age, too. But. It's the kind of bad back. And I love this when he starts walking down the stairs. It's the kind of bad back that makes you do this. He takes a step. He goes, ah, 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 ooh, oh, ah, 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 
Ooh. You know how you ah. take one step yeah. and it's Very two funny pains. physical so comedy. Funny. Very funny physical comedy from Marklin Baker. And then he takes a few steps making these noises and Balky just looks at him. Balky's like not having, he's like, are you finished? Yes. He's like, are you done? <laughs> and he offers to help Larry down the stairs. So then we dissolve to a few moments later and we see Balky. Uh, Balky is carrying Larry piggyback. Yeah, the next time we see him, Val- Larry is on Balky's back coming down the stairs. And they're oh slowly my. making their way down the stairs. And uh, they get back. They're down on the eighth floor now. You notice, same set, yes. different floor numbers. And Balky is still trying to convince Larry that they are doing a good thing. He says, "Don't worry, cousin. You hurt yourself doing something good for somebody else. God will smile on you." <laughs> and Larry, ever the cynic, is like, "That's what I did this for—a <laughs> smile." Oh. <laughs> Balky says, "If there's one thing that this simple meepiat knows that." That is that if you do something good for other people, good things are bound to happen for you. And just as he's giving this Mipiat lesson, yes. Miposian lesson, lecture, we hear piano notes bumping. <laughs> you hear clumping and then the keys of the piano. and piano notes, just a few at a time. Ding, like bump, bump, bump. <laughs> yes, bump, bump, bump. And, and they, then pause. they just stop and look. And the facial expressions from here on out <laughs> are amazing. They look out and Balky just goes, what was that? <laughs> Larry's like, could be anything. <laughs> and uh, so they start walking down again. And then they hear again, dum, dum, bum, dum, bum, dum. <laughs> And Belky goes, or it could be a piano rolling down the stairs. They turn, they reach the seventh floor landing, and they're now hearing these bunk, 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 get closer and closer and closer. And they look up, and you see the piano turning coming down the, the stairs corner. and turning the corner, the floor on above the landing. Them. How is this piano turning the corner on and its I saw, own? I don't know. I saw this. I'm like, what is happening? What is happening? And Balky goes, it appears to be following us. And then he goes, Carson, did Stephen King ever write anything about a piano? Which is so funny if you know Stephen King books like Christine, where he made the car come to life and chase yeah. people. I mean, this piano at this point does seem possessed because it's turning the corner on its own. And yes. And Larry's uh, like, at there's, every landing, there's got 10. to be a logical explanation. But if you notice, this all started the minute Larry go, it said, I hate this stupid piano and kicked it. Yeah. Every bad thing started happening. Bad things started happening. I don't know. Larry, Larry cursed it. He's like, there's got to be a logical explanation. Pianos don't follow people. He goes, maybe the floors are uneven. <laughs> <laughs> so then they kind of start going back the stairs, back down the stairs again. And then we hear a lot of bumping and a lot of piano notes. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> And then they look up and the piano is like very close to them, right at the top of the very same flight that they're on. What were those noises, though? Because it didn't really move anywhere between yeah. the last shot. It's the same yeah. place. It's just go. It's further down. It's actually yeah. coming down the stairs. So I was like, why? It just made noises just to taunt them. Yeah. And Balky's like, oh, maybe it's alive. And they start screaming and running down the stairs. And the piano also continues running down the stairs and going bum, 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 bum. Balky and Larry pass the sixth floor landing and they turn the corner and <laughs> and Larry's like, Larry is still uh, being carried piggyback, yes, piggyback style by Balky. And Larry's like, faster, faster. And Balky's <laughs> like, perhaps you would like to get off and wait for the next Meepiot? <laughs> that is so funny. And <laughs> then we hear the piano again. Bum, 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 bum. Larry like turns Balky's head head down to face forward as if directing him to keep going down. And they go down to the fifth floor. They go down to the fourth floor. And then we see Larry's jacket from earlier hanging off the railing of the fifth floor. And Balky, they pass it. Balky comes back and up. And then he turns around and come back up. And he's like, and what Larry's are you doing? Like, <laughs> Balky's like, you forgot your jacket. And Larry's like, forget the jacket. And like turns his head and directs him to keep going. So they leave the jacket and then we see the piano at the top of the, the flight, the flight that they're on at the top of the stairs and it, and it turns the corner on the landing and it tips over and it starts coming down the stairs. And then Balky and Larry just sort of look at it and scream as the piano comes down that flight, they get down to the landing and just step out of the way. 
And weirdly, the piano has been turning every landing right. until Except now. This time, but we're... this time it doesn't turn <laughs> yeah, on why the doesn't landing. The parrot... Just they goes... jump out of the way on the landing, and this time, uh, and and the door behind them is fifth floor, so they're still pretty high up. Uh, the piano comes down that flight of stairs and goes straight, crashes through the window as it did before, but this time goes all the way through and we hear a loud crash of the piano. There's quite a long pause. And uh, we hear and some cars yes, honking. Yes, then you hear brakes and then the crash. And then yeah, you get a great a pause la- and, and a then, crash. And then Balky Larry just step and look out the window and Larry just goes, well, <laughs> you get a great lay. Well, and Balky's wow. like, I had a, no idea a piano had so many parts. And he's looking yeah, down. So- okay, first of all, they could have really killed somebody here. Piano to the head would have killed somebody. But this Second also- of all, yeah. if they hadn't stepped out of the way, it's like an upright piano. It's not a, like a grand piano or something. Yes. They could have just stood at the bottom and stopped it. No, this thing was going to kill them. Stairs and it was coming after them. Second, third of all, fifth of all, whatever <laughs> number we're on, why did it turn the landing, turn why did it, by itself yes. on every other landing, but this time it didn't turn. What is happening with this piano? I don't understand wow, this. How did this happen? But you know what? It, 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 piano. It, every time I watch this, it reminded me of Tom and Jerry. The yeah. couple of scenes where the piano flattens Tom down the oh, stairs. Yeah, totally. Like that happens all the time. I was like, this is so oh, cartoony. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's great. Totally reminded me of Tom and Jerry cartoon. And then Tom would be in the shape of the stairs. Yes. He would be all crinkled in the shape of the stairs or yeah. flattened like an, and open up like an accordion and you yeah, hear accordion yeah. sound. Oh, I love those Tom and Jerry. Cookies. So, yes. Okay, so now so the piano there's no more piano. <laughs> this pia- you know what? The piano would have been way out of tune anyways if by the time they got with all the things that have been through. Yeah. You need to tune the piano. That takes at least an hour. Maybe Chuck uh, Panama no, could have. No, it's, it. it's very hard. This is a lengthy process. So, <laughs> All right. So there's no more piano. <laughs> no more piano. Or, and or they, out they the never piano. made it to the party either. And so we go to the next scene, which is a little bit later, and we're back in the uh, lobby, and the elevator doors open, and and we just see uh, Chuck, Panama, and Lydia canoodling in the elevator. Well, he's holding her up in the air. Yeah, she's and they're tiny, making and he's out. a bigger yes, guy, and they're making out. Can we and describe? She's like dangling. Uh, describe Chuck Panama real quick, played by actor Michael Delano. 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 But I thought his outfit was quite kind of like a hair. very eighties like. <laughs> He's got a dark beard and goatee. He's got a yeah. blazer with the sleeves rolled up, uh, <laughs> a light purple shirt with the buttons undone, chest, chest wide open, hair, chest gold hair chains, sticking out, yeah, gold watch, gold Ugh. rings. This guy is uh, something else. This is what music producers in the eighties yeah. look like, apparently. So, yeah, they're making out and they exit and, and, and Lydia's like, so Chuck, did you like my singing? And he goes, why don't we discuss it tomorrow night at my hotel? You know what's going to happen. Ooh. Come on, Lydia. Uh, and so oh, he kisses her hand uh, and Lydia's like, ooh, and he goes, until then, ciao, baby, uh, and leaves. And as he's leaving, we see Balky and Larry uh, limping down the stairs. Finally, yeah, all they're the way like down. shirts are untucked. They're sweaty. They're achy. They're like yeah. just a mess. And I love this. Balky goes, Miss Lydia. And Lydia's like, Balky, Larry, I didn't see you at the party. Did I invite you to the party? She just oh completely forgot everything. She totally forgot. That this, that's been I would going be so on. pissed. And Larry reminds her that they were moving her piano. And she goes, oh, that funny thing. I didn't need that piano after all. I I used a backup tape, background tape. It had a full orchestra. It just supported my voice so much better than that dinky little piano. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my goodness. And Larry's like, did you hear that, Balky? She didn't need the piano. And Balky says, well, that's fortunate, Miss Lydia, because the piano now bears a striking resemblance to a pile of Lincoln logs. (laughs) And then Lydia goes, oh, who cares about that piano? Chuck, Chuck likes, likes me. me. He really likes me. She does the Sally Field pick. Yeah. Remember, we talked about that before. And then she goes, Oh, yeah. And you want to know why he really likes me? Because, and then song alert, she breaks out into Barbara Streisand's song, People. People, people who need people. And you know what? She can sing. It's yeah. not, it's but not this bad. Is- this is what I was referring to uh, earlier when I said this is the episode that made me realize how funny of an act, how how yeah. good of a comedic actress yeah. she is because she was so funny She's and like she really got into it, hamming, yes. yeah, yes. and then she 
keeps singing as she gets in the elevator. She's like full body singing. Uh, and she, yeah, and it's, it's hilarious. Really good. And that's yeah. when I was like, man, this was Mrs. Tunkasetti. I don't even remember what she did. As Ms. Like she yeah. just completely becomes this character. She's so good. Yeah, she's full body singing, like belting it out in the elevator, and she's. And gone. I was like, man, she can sing. All right. And then Belkin goes, cause it isn't it wonderful the way things worked out? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Larry's like, Larry's like wonderful. Like, nope. We killed ourselves taking a piano up 10 floors for nothing, is what Larry says. And Belkin goes, well, no, that's true. <laughs> He's like, okay. And then we hear the music. So let's find out what the lesson was. Oh, it's lesson time, everyone. Pay attention. Lesson time. Balky admits, yes, that's true. They did kill themselves. With the piano for nothing. But he says, but the point is that you helped you helped me do this, even though it was against your better judgment. And Larry's still not. He's like, that makes this worth it for you. And Belkis says, yes, because if you were willing to help me to do this, then I know that even if the world falls in on me, I can ask for your help. Aww. Aww. That's a good lesson. Larry's like, well, Balky, you're probably right. But he's like, just don't ask me for the next few days. Because his back is hurt and he's sweaty. Yes. A sweaty mess. And one final joke. Balky says, that's plenty of time, cousin. We won't have to help Harriet move into our building until next week. What? (laughs) Uh -uh. (laughs) And And then, yeah, Balky, uh, Larry starts to turn and come at Balky in his uh, limp (laughs) way. Because he's got him into another mess. And roll credits. Listener, check out our T Public shop where you can get awesome Dance of Joy t shirts, hoodies, our logo on mugs, cell phone cases, face masks. You can help support the show and show your love for the show all at the same time. Danceofjoypod.com slash shop for the goodies. Get the goodies. There's always sales there. You know what? The finally, the last few lessons have been kind of weak. This one, yeah, this, this one's is a good. solid lesson this after a, lesson. a great physical comedy episode bit. It wasn't about the piano or helping Lydia or helping other people, but it was about doing the yeah, right thing, helping when the each right other. thing, yeah. helping each other when it needs to be done. Uh, so that comment about helping Harriet to, uh, to move into their building the next week. Uh, I guess Harriet does eventually live in their building in this season. And then obviously they get spun, spun off into their own. But they have a house. whole house yeah, later on in Family Larry. Matters. But maybe they were planning on, uh, I think they were planning on Carl and Harriet Winslow to be a bigger part in the, the show. But then well, they're like, yeah, no, like Carl, their own show. Carl will show up later, but on this show, but not for a bit. But overall, solid, uh, solid comedy, solid physical comedy by the cousins, and you really—I was hurting. I felt for them having to move the stupid piano, and then the piano uh, coming out being them. possessed. That's <laughs> kind of pushing it in a crazy Larry way. But I love. I think the lesson time don't kick should have pianos. been don't kick a piano because then you'll curse it and it'll be possessed and it will turn corners. I mean, on you know how many chairs he's and kicked and other things he's he's probably. Yes. annoyed like inanimate objects will Do come not and get you. kick the piano that's the lesson i take away from this episode i will never kick a piano no you play the piano and you gently press on the pedals yes you don't but you it. don't kick it all right let's hear what our listeners have to say about this episode we'll start with cousin evelyn cousin evelyn says uh, perhaps you'd like to get off and wait for the next Mipia. This one's in the top 10 lines of the entire eight seasons. It's a good line. It's a good line. It's a good line. I'm still sticking with Chuck Suez as Chuck my Suez, favorite of this Chuck, line look, canal, of this episode. Canal humor is great. But the image of like a, a Mipo's taxi stand where it's yeah. just dudes waiting <laughs> for people to jump on their back. It's like, I'll get the next one. Like, that's hilarious. <laughs> that is funny. That's what it made me think For of. piggyback rides, yes, that's, that's the public transportation on Mipo's. That's called a Miposian Uber. Uber is, piggyback. The back. Next, it's the next guy <laughs> just standing there. Jump on. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. She says these two, Cousin Evelyn also says these two are legitimately sweating in this episode. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think they were. Uh, okay. And she says the first time we hear the piano clunking down the stairs, the look on their faces is priceless. Those looks totally crack me up. It's like innocence and disbelief and realization all wrapped up in one subtle little expression. It is. Like they're so good at their face expression. 
And Cousin Evelyn says this was one of her favorite episodes. Why? We see Larry's goodness come through. Mm-hmm. Even when he is miserable, afraid of hurting his back and cranky, he won't let Balky face hardship yeah. alone. And Balky is compelled to help another. He just cannot sit by and watch someone be left without help in their time of need. The goodness of the two characters shines in this episode while somehow maximizing humor. That's great. Yes. That's a great observation. It really Very helps. Good it helps being invested in this, you know, the whole time. Yeah. Uh, Cousin John has a couple of great observations. He says, I know this isn't exactly the same, but Lydia could have just gotten a synthesizer. Yes. <laughs> yes, she could have. Yes, in fact, she, she just got a tape in the she, end. She even did less than a synthesizer and yeah, just, she just played got a, tape. a tape and a stereo. Absolutely. Why? She I don't know why. Even sung a cappella, whatever. Uh, Cousin John also says, I was let down by this episode, mostly by my expectations. The guys are obviously influenced by Laurel and Hardy, who starred in The Music Box, a 30-minute short film about two guys moving a piano up a huge flight of stairs. It won an Academy Award and is in the Library of Congress for good reason. Using that incredibly high bar for comparison, this just didn't quite deliver for me. I'm biased, but if I'd never seen The Music Box, I'm sure I'd like this more than I do. And then he said, be that as it may, I strongly prefer stories where both of the boys are victims, like this one. Overall, it's probably a six or seven. For me, there are a lot of funny gags, and I laughed out loud a few times. But the next time I need to see a piano moved, it'll be with (laughs) Stan and Ollie. Now, this is very interesting because, yes, this whole episode is based off Laurel and Hardy's The Music Box, which you can watch on YouTube right now. I will yes, put a link in the show notes. Did but you watch much it? Like, we both much watched like, it. Much uh, like this episode, that film also left me with a lot of questions about things like that were going on with their piano in 1932. I mean, they, they have a I long flight it. of stairs, but then also inside, a through a window, inside a building, down some stairs, all this crazy stuff. It is wild that you could instantly, they, they, there's a reference and we can check out a thing and step into 1932 yeah. instantly. Yeah. That, was I was cool. like, whoa. And it was it was good. But comparing it to this, we'll talk about that after the comments, because I have a few thoughts about that. Also, Yeah. Also, uh, in the Laurel and Hardy, we talked about this sort of before we started recording, a bunch of questions I had about what happened in this film. But similar, one thing that's similar is, so in Laurel and Hardy, they have this piano on like a, on like a cart that's like a horse-driven cart. Right. That's like really high up off the ground. Yes. And we see them getting it off the cart but but it they never show us how they get it on no, the cart no. cuz it's pretty high up they have to, to like lift how it pretty they just, high up. they just showed up with the piano right, at the front right. door also the right. p- the piano turning by itself comes from the music box it does that in in one just case just once in one, just many, once yeah. they they took that and they made it like this piano is possessed but <laughs> that was neat to see that parallel uh and yeah that that the, a lot of destruction and the piano also falls downstairs a lot a lot in, they go up and here. down the stairs up and down, a up lot and, down. and you know just like three stooges like they should have been dead by the end of this and yeah, everyone the was ending fine is a little bit because... different but i won't give it away no spoilers because it did just come out in 1932 it's only been around for no spoilers years. yeah the ending is a little bit different, but there is also no piano at the end of the Yes, the one. piano also does not survive, so that is yes. similar. But I recommend go watch it. And compared to this, we will get into that in a minute after these next two comments, sister. Okay. Cousin Lauren Miller makes a very, very slick observation. When the piano goes out the window the first time and the camera angle is from the outside, you can see two ropes on the stairs near the guys. Oh, oh, I didn't, look, oh, I didn't watch little, that carefully. A little yes. Easter egg. I love when they find things. 1988 special effects. They had to, to keep the piano from falling out, I guess. And finally, we have cousin Pam Hitchcock, who writes a personal view. When I watch the music box, there is no heart in it. Physical comedy, yes. A funny twist ending, yes. But they ultimately are piano movers. There's no sweet, caring friendship, no protecting each other. Aha. Uh-huh. See, I find this interesting because John very preferred good the music box over this episode. Pam feels the other way. I kind of like feel like cousin Pam does. Like the the yeah. the the, uh, the the Laurel and Hardy film is 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 great for the time. You know, it's of course the first time you've right. seen that. But we are so invested in this show and the fact that we know these two's relationship. Yeah. So Laurel and Hardy was like films, right? It wasn't a serial 
a serial there were a bunch comedy. Of like short films. That was yeah, kind of, like it was like Stooges. They were like short movies. But it wasn't yeah. like episodic. We didn't get to n- see their characters grow and develop. It was like it was like kind of physical comedy, buddy comedy. Yeah, and they were, they were great at that. Yeah. But I don't know. This one, I thought, uh, just uh, I connected to more. I mean, obviously, because we've been watching this show for so yes. long and hanging out with the yes. cousins is like you're. Invested. Yeah, I, for me, I thought this was this was good. The lesson was good. The physical comedy was good. There were some questions unanswered, but I it was it was pretty entertaining. The homage uh, to the Laurel and Hardy is great. Also, like you yeah. know. Uh, and in fact, we will see another homage to a more blatant yes. homage to Laurel and Hardy uh, a few seasons later. Where they actually play Laurel yes. and Hardy, which is great. <laughs> yes. Which is great. Um, so we had some, the writers must have been big Laurel and Hardy fans. Well, these writers, they're very well versed in a lot of things, you know, musicals, canal humor, <laughs> canals, <laughs> classic comedy. You got to know your classic Chuck comedies. Suez. <laughs> so funny. I'm dying about Chuck Suez. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maposian taxi stands, you know, they had very, very specific interests. Uber me, Piat. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, we didn't get any don't be ridiculous, so of let's have one. I have don't be ridiculous. <laughs> we also Perfect. didn't get any uh, Dimitri appearances, so let's no, have one we of those. In the, we weren't in the apartment, so how are we going to do this? We're going to head over to Instagram and out one of our favorite. Uh, Dance of Joy podcast spinoff Instagram accounts, which is the Instagram account called Dimitri Sheep. By so Dimitri if you Sheep. Have it, and it's by posts by Dimitri Sheep. If you haven't been seen it yet, please head over to Instagram and like and follow Dimitri Sheep. Dimitri Sheep is on this journey through Perfect Strangers with us, posting a post for each episode, themed to each episode as we go through our show as well. So the post for this episode, the location is the piano moving, tuning, refinishing, repair, cut off, repair, repair. piano moving, tuning, moving, refinishing, moving, repair, tuning, refinishing, repair. It's a lot of things to the piano. Yes, it's, it's cut off on my screen. Um, and let's see what's going on in this picture. We have Dimitri Sheep on a couch. He's got a stamp stuck to his uh, on tongue. His tongue, adorable. Uh, which is adorable reference. And then all sprawled out in front of him is classical sheet music, sheet music. piano music, piano sheet music from see, Beethoven, Beethoven, Chopin, Chopin Mendelssohn, uh, um, Prelude and Fugue Bach. number five in D major, uh, which is, that's, you know, it's great. Piano, I think that's it. Music. Just a little that's stamp it. Easter egg and the sheet, sheet music, music will do it. For a piano, yes, very nice. I actually nice have post. an upright piano here at our. Did at you our move home. it yourself? No, we had movers. I had, no, <laughs> and then I had somebody come and tune it. You can't move a piano. Are you kidding did me? The mover, did the movers go one, two, three, lift? lift? Yeah, no, the one dude just carried it on his back. It was amazing. Oh, really? guys, no, I don't know. It was on wheels. They rolled it in. Yeah, you know, it's okay. really, it's actually. A, you also are not up ten flights of stairs. No, and it's from. Uh, it's my wife's uh, mom's old. Uh, upright piano from like the Love 30s. It. It's Love a it. really old piano, and I started to learn a little bit during the pandemic. Nice. I can play nice. chords. That's about it. Nice. Well, I'm sure you could figure it out. Um, yeah, if I had more time. I mean, I watched a bunch of videos. Yeah. It's fun to have. You can learn anything on YouTube. You really days. can. All right. Well, next time you have to move it, we'll we'll try their method. We'll <laughs> develop, so, establish uh, a rhythm. That, that's another thing that uh, it's similar from Laurel, the Laurel and Hardy music box. They go. Heave ho instead ho, of one to be live. Ho, heave. Yeah. When will Laurel say weave, Hardy will say ho. Heave ho. Heave ho. Heave ho. So good job, Dimitri Sheep. Go on. Everyone should go and follow Dimitri Sheep on Instagram. It's lovely. And now we are at the portion of our show that we call Perfect Strangers Today or PS Today, in which we discuss. If this whole thing, it was done in 1932, it was done in 1988. If these two guys had to move a piano again today in 2022, would the story hold up or how would we do things differently? The Largely, the premise does hold up. It's kind of a timeless thing. Like you're always... You still have to move a piano. You got to move a piano. That has not changed. They don't fly around on their own. can't fall back to social media. For, well, we kind of can because you can hire TaskRabbit or something. 
Oh, can you imagine the test rapper guy? He didn't know he's going to have to move a piano and he's like, what? Ten flights of stairs. What? Yeah, for, I'll give you $20 if you move this piano up. <laughs> uh, no, but I mean, I mentioned the last week. No, like, I the, think it would be exactly the same. The yeah. Friends episode where they're moving a sofa or any moving yeah. a big heavy thing. That's right. Uh, but now, like, you wouldn't need a piano because you got MP3s. You got little beat beat devices. Oh, but where you, you just said music. you have a piano. But I do have oh, a piano. Oh, for Lydia would it be a piano, yeah, for sure. Lydia, yeah, have a rich sound. Like a synthesizer with a, sure. a speaker will sound just as rich now. But, yeah, you still have to move pianos, and they're still very delicate, and they'll smash into a thousand pieces. Um, but most buildings have freight elevators, which this I thought was going to be— This building probably did have a freight I elevator. I thought this was going to be the yes. catch yes. at the end of this episode, that somebody was going to come by and be oh like, why don't you just Quick use story. the freight elevator? That doesn't always work. Quick story. When I moved into my one condo many years ago, I had this sofa— that barely fit in the freight elevator, right? Oh boy. I, I, I think I shoved it into the extreme corners and I had to bend it and hold it oh as the door closed oh to get it in and I got it out. Okay, right? Cut to several years later. I sold the condo. I have to move out. And I was like, oh, I just, I'll take this back in the freight elevator. That's how I got it in there. I could not get the stupid sofa back in the freight they elevator. They changed the freight elevator? No, it was the same. I don't know how I had wedged it in the many sofa years ago. Got fat. So you know what I ended up doing? So we just chopped the stupid sofa in half. I didn't even want it anymore. I was like, we're just going to break this thing so I can get it downstairs and you throw it out. You chopped it? We broke it. We oh. bro- I don't. I think we used a hammer, a sledgehammer, a saw. Oh, wow. I, I had a buddy. We tore the thing in half to get it back out, oh, even though it came boy. up in that elevator. So the freight elevator will not always be an answer for you. <laughs> Because we were not, I was, I lived on the eighth floor. I was like, I'm not yeah. carrying the sofa down eight floors. No, that's, I don't want it. Just break it and let's get it out of here. I gotta, I gotta get out. So I've been the, yeah, the, I don't know what else to change. It's pretty much. It, it reminds me of, maybe I'm thinking of this show, a later episode or another show. I feel like it's done on many shows where they have to move something big that doesn't fit in the elevator. So they put it on top of the elevator and then they're like, we'll just stop the elevator a floor below what we need. Wait, and you get can't the doors. put things on top of the elevator. It's been done on TV shows. I'm not sure if that I'm thinking of this show dangerous. later on or in, or other shows, but um, it's even more ridiculous. I definitely have seen it somewhere. Someone made a comment that this uh, this plot comes up again. Does this plot come up again? Y- maybe that's what I'm thinking Somebody of. Somebody said in our Facebook we'll group a, a, a story so great they did it twice, and I wasn't so sure what they meant. By that it. happens a few times. Okay, so we might this see show. this show again. I do remember we what will see some repeat premises at least. So, yeah, looking forward to that. Maybe I just gave it away. Sorry, spoilers. Spoilers for a spoilers. 34-year-old TV show that's already aired. Anyways, stay subscribed, listener. Next week, the cousins will hobnob with the rich and famous at a, at a ritzy party uh, thrown by the publisher, I believe, of the Chronicle. Oh, that sounds fun and embarrassing. Yes, it's going to be <laughs> hilarious. And you can also support the show by buying us a virtual coffee. Visit danceofjoypod.com slash support. There is a link in the show notes. You can buy us a virtual coffee. It goes back to the hosting and uh, the hosting and maintenance fees and keeping the show running. And we appreciate all the love and support that everyone who has bought us a coffee so far. Every little bit helps. But if you can't buy us a coffee, that's totally fine, too. We're just happy you're here listening to us talk about our favorite show. You can do us a favor by checking out all of our social media links um, over at our website, danceofjoypod.com. You can also see all the platforms where the podcast is available. You can like, you can subscribe in Apple Podcasts, leave us a rating or a review. Uh, you can also leave us a voice message right there on the on our website. There's a little button. You can talk to us, tell us your thoughts. Or hit us up on any of this on any of our socials, all there on the website. Um, and if none of that works for you, you can always just send us an old fashioned electronic mail at danceofjoypod at gmail.com. No stamps required. Make sure you put a stamp on it. <laughs> <laughs> stamp. But Imran, what is the most important thing our listeners should do? Oh, always lift with your legs. I'm being completely <laughs> serious. People don't know how to lift things up. You can avoid back injury. Simple lift squat down. You lift through the legs and the hips. Do all the work. You will. And the second most me. important thing is never kick a piano. 
Never and kick what a piano. is the third most important thing our listeners should do? Is to share this show with their friends, their community, and their Facebook groups, on their Twitters, on their Instagram, spread. Word of mouth. Word of mouth is the on best the way. On the Nextdoor app. Yes, anywhere. You know, on the Ring LinkedIn. app. Yeah, hold, just whatever. I have a, <laughs> wherever LinkedIn, Nextdoor, Hinge, whatever. Word of mouth is the best just way pass it on. <laughs> to spread the joy of perfect strangers. Thanks for listening, listener. And now we are so happy. Now we are so happy. We do the dance of joy. Hey, 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 hey,